All right. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar all about reviews. See people hopping on. We'll give it give it a little bit of time. Where's everyone joining us from today? Drop it in the chat. Ooh, Toronto. Always wanted to visit. Nashville, okay. India, NYC, Mexico. Ooh, we're all over. Oh, St. Pete, Florida. I'm going to St. Pete um, next month. I've never been, I'm very excited. Very cool. All right, I'm gonna give it one more minute at the 05 mark. We'll we'll kick this kick this party off. All right. Good morning or afternoon or evening from uh, from those of you joining all over. My name is Elizabeth. Um, I work over on the Dacity team and I'm very excited to have the opportunity to host this awesome panel for today's webinar. Um, we'll be reviewing uh, a Kendo reviews and Dacity and how we um, how we have kind of worked together to build a reporting infrastructure that helps merchants uh, leverage the most out of their reviews data. And Caraway has been gracious enough to join us today to walk us through their experience um, using, using reviews in a very data-driven way. So thanks everyone for being here today. I will give each, uh, each panelist uh, a hot second to introduce themselves. So Connor, we'll, we'll start with you. Hi everyone, my name is Connor. Uh, what I do and what I look like is up on the screen, but uh, kind of handle all revenue touch points for Caraway from growth to working with Bryce on the retention front and email and SMS levers, as well as working across our e-commerce suite. It's great to meet everybody. Thanks Connor and Mr. Bryce. Hi, I'm Bryce. Um, I've been with Caraway for about a year now. Um, started my career off in customer experience, so very uh, aware of just customer feedback loops um, and have kind of transitioned into the retention marketing space. Uh, so focusing on channels like reviews and email, SMS, all of that um, to just kind of deliver best in class marketing. And if you folks have ever seen the Caraway marketing, you know it's it's best in class. And if you haven't seen it, you should subscribe to their emails except an, an SMS and all that. Fun I don't stuff. know how you wouldn't have seen it before, but I you know you. It's pretty effective and everywhere. Um, Marcel, my teammate. Hi, nice to meet everyone. I'm a sales and solutions engineer at Audacity. So my name is Marcel Fafard. Really my role, I started in customer success and development. Now I really help get our newest merchants across the first like three months, really help build out custom solutions and get the most out of our platform. Awesome. And last but certainly not least, Ms. Lindsay. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Lindsay Kalinske. I am the Director of Marketing at Okendo, which I'll get into what is Okendo if you're not familiar in about a minute. Um, but like I said, I'm the Director of Marketing, but I've also, just in terms of my career, um, also been on the customer success side as well, really working with um, some top e-commerce merchants to help optimize revenue. So excited to be here today talking all about reviews. Awesome. Thank you. And with that, we will jump right into all things Okendo. Yeah. So like I said, for those of you who aren't familiar with Okendo, we are a customer marketing platform. 
Um, and what we like to do is we like to turn your customers into what we call super fans. Um, and essentially what we mean by that is giving merchants, e-commerce merchants, the ability to cultivate brand advocacy, scale word of mouth, and maximize lifetime value with their existing customer base to basically help them um, acquire, using their existing customer base to acquire new customers. Um, so like I said, we're here today. Our bread and butter is reviews, um, but we have evolved into a full um, customer marketing platform. So we also have surveys, referrals, quizzes, and we're coming out with loyalty in the very near future. So keep an eye out for that. Um, but the idea is, again, all of these products together can help you drive more from your existing customers. Awesome. And you folks work with yeah, so we uh, <laughs> over 9,000 <laughs> of the top Shopify brands. So Caraway, of course, um, and so excited to talk with uh, everyone here today about their review strategy in particular, um, but some other great brands like Skims, Ilia Beauty. Uh, we work with uh, a ton, so not to go through all them, but like I said, they trust us and we're excited to, to share some of the strategies today. Awesome. And I will note for everyone on the call, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the Q&A box. Um, we'll have some time at the end to, to walk through Q&A. Also, we're recording this webinar and we'll be sending out a link. So um, if you A, want to rewatch everything discussed today or B, get in contact right with, with either technology, um, you can certainly do that. With that, um, I will kick it over to Marcel to walk you folks through a little bit about what Dacity does. All right, so Dacity is a platform that's an architecture really built for brands. So we only work with brands, have a very technical uh, team that's built a platform that makes it really easy to get insights into your business. So what that means is we've built API integrations with partners such as Akendo, and really what you get right out of the box is the ability to get deeper insights into your data and also be able to action on it on the retention marketing side, the acquisition marketing, really make a lot of things easy to do right in our platform. So it gives you a personalized data environment. Um, you can also build lots of custom dashboards to get some of those deeper insights as well. So really we own the data stack from end to end and we enable all of our brands to make more out of their data. Awesome. And just a handful of brands we work with as well. Um, decent amount of crossover, I would say, with the Akendo folks. So we're excited to be launching um, this, this joint dashboard together to help brands like Caraway, et cetera, gain more insights into their reviews data. Um, with that, I will actually stop sharing my screen now. And Marcel is going to hop into a live demo of the dashboard. Right. My screen should be showing now. And what's yep. showing here is the Dacity platform. Just wanted to show how easy it is to set up the integration for our current merchants and then what you're going to get once you do connect. So you would hop over this integrations tab, hit new integration. I'm someone who searches, so just put an Okendo here at the top. From there, you set up a REST API key within the Okendo panel. So there's a link here on how to do it. Afterwards, you just copy and paste those in right here, hit create, and everything else from there is automatic. And what you get out of this is a dashboard. So with this dashboard, we've added a lot of features, uh, even beyond uh, some you know, overall analysis of just all of your reviews, you can start breaking it out by different products, see the different sediments as well. So you can really start getting deeper insights into how each of the products are doing based on your customer's feedback. And from here, you could also find things such as like checkout issues, depending on how you filter it. So negative reviews, mixed reviews, anywhere to really improve the experience as well. So if you go ahead, you can actually click on different tabs here and filter directly. So when you click here on positive, you're going to start seeing your reviews broken out by product, as I said before. You also can see things over time. So if there's a spike in reviews, if there's a drop off, especially in negative reviews, maybe there's a product supply issue. So it really allows different parts of your team to get insight into what's going on. If you scroll down here as well, you can also see different review types with media. 
So if you wanted to see different thumbnails, different, um, you know, media that's come along with the reviews, you can start seeing those directly here and really within the review body, getting actual zero party data from your customers about what's going on. So here we have a lot of super fans of Caraway explaining what they love about it. And you know, you could really use this in many different ways. And I know the Caraway team is going to get into uh, specifics on how they use it. But really what the dashboard allows you to do is have a really easy to use interface that you can interact with your data, find trends, and find opportunities as well. And you can use this to action on your marketing data, both on the acquisition side, as well as the retention side. So super simple to use, easy to set up, and super powerful. Thanks, Marcel. Yeah. Um, so when folks signed up for this webinar, we gave the option to ask some questions, right? Things that are top of mind for you as you think of um, how, how to gain more value from your reviews data. So these folks here are generous enough to participate in a panel addressing some of those questions today. So um, this first one, I think goes out to, or it makes sense for a Kendo and Caraway folks to touch on, but I think the, the biggest looming question is, okay, how do we increase reviews? How do you folks think about increasing reviews? Um, I can jump in, I think, right off the bat. I think there's, um, you know, such a rich amount of ways that we're able to do this. And luckily, like with Okendo, we have a dedicated um, CSM who helps us strategize kind of along the way. And we've done uh, just a ton of um, different offer testings. You can obviously do incentivized reviews with um, with Okindo. So we do a lot of offer testing. We look at um, kind of our delivered and fulfillment events to trigger um, to trigger those review requests, and um, also do a lot of testing on the timing of those emails or SMSs, um, just to optimize, just like you would any other channel, to figure out what's the actual best way to meet the customer where they're most likely going to review us and hopefully be very impressed with the product. Um, different brands will have, um, I think, different ways to do that. I previously worked for a Vibin company and it's kind of foolish to not wait 60 days because you need that kind of amount of time. With Caraway, we kind of go off of an unboxing moment because it's just very, um, an exciting time. Um, so doing that kind of testing like down to the day of the journey is um, very valuable. Um, and uh, I can just keep going and going. Um, <laughs> anyone is welcome to jump in. Yeah, no, I, I think you hit a lot of the nail like on the head is it's one, the incentive. And I know that, you know, sometimes people worry about incentives based on their margins. Can you offer it? But it really does make a difference. And you also have to remember these are people that are most likely going to be happy with your product. And it's going to give them a reason to also come back and to increase their LTV. So something to consider, this isn't necessarily like a, a new discount for someone who's never tried your brand before. This is a discount for someone that um, has tried your brand. And again, you want to continue that journey with them. Um, so that's one thing to remember. I'd also say too, just along the lines of the incentive, reviews are going to help other customers convert. So again, when you're doing the analysis there, that's just something to remember because if you can do an incentive and it doesn't always necessarily need to be percent off. You could also, if you have a loyalty program, offer loyalty points. Um, if you um, have any other integrations with gift cards, you could do things like that too. So there's different things you can do and you can also tier those. So if you want to make sure you're getting more um, reviews with videos or more reviews with photos, you can say, okay, I'll give you 100 loyalty points for review, 200 with a photo, 300 with a video. That's all going to um, help as well. I think the delivery date, Bryce, like you said, is so spot on of like when, depending on your vertical, again, if you're like supplements or your skincare or something, that's going to take a little bit more time for you to see the result. Um, one, you also want to make sure that review is actually reflective of the time that they've had. Um, mm -hmm. So that's great. Really think about your product and how long and, and base it on that. Um, the worst thing you want to do is ask for a review before they've even gotten the product or if they've already returned the product. So those are certain things to also think about um, as well. And then I would say just as you're thinking about um, 
you know, review vendors as well. Think about the collection experience that they have. Okendo in particular, when you go to like click from an email to review, it's a single page that's mobile optimized. If you want to add that photo and video, you can do it right there. So that's really important too, is that, you know, the actual experience, if it's like six pages of which four they can even get, like like with anything else, they're going to drop off. So um, that's definitely something I would add to consider as as well if you're wanting to collect more fees. Yeah, I, yeah. I really agree with that point in that, you know, as you're thinking of like from a customer experience, I think like the fewer steps in the funnel are better. And then also like as a marketer, like that's when I can do my job best when I don't have to like drill down on six levels, I can drill down on three and uh, really understand what's going on and where people are significantly dropping off um, to kind of optimize for that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think touching um, or like double clicking into that, into your point around increasing lifetime value, Lindsay, is um, a, a brand like Caraway, I think is actually very interesting in this aspect to me because your, um, your like flagship product, right, is, is the pots and pans and people don't really repurchase pots and pans too often. So you don't want to be in a position where you're like waiting four or five years to get someone to repurchase. So if you throw in that incentive um, to repurchase sooner, then there, you're starting to like cross pollinate into your other categories more, right? And continuing to, to grow the business. So um, yeah, I mean, I think super, super, super super interesting use case for offering that incentive to your customers that you've already acquired to just continue building that loyalty. Yeah. yeah. I, I would just add on to that and say, when you, when you do the, the formula on how to calculate the right incentive to offer, remove acquisition costs from the equation. So mm -hmm. you have that uh, buffer built into the contribution margin you can generate from a next purchase since you've already spent the money to acquire them. So they're now in your database. Now you know a little bit more about why they bought the product in the first place, what they've enjoyed about the initial product experience. Set an incentive to get them back, get them into a cross category to uh, to Elizabeth's point and you know, remove acquisition costs from the formula and you'll realize you've got a little bit more room to play with. And another thing that's been great is obviously there's some, some crackdown on how you uh, surface uh, solicited reviews and make sure that those are badged as incentivized. And Okendo makes that nice and easy. So Definitely encourage everybody to go look at your site, make sure you've got that uh, that badge showing. I think there's going to be a little bit of crackdown on that over the next year. Yeah, totally. All, all in the name of transparency, right? <laughs> um, awesome. So one of the next questions uh, or topics we wanted to touch on today was how can you better utilize reviews? So um, I know we've kind of, we've we've chatted about ways that you can find product improvement, how you want to retarget customers. Um, so I'll, I'll open it up to this group to kind of jump in and uh, and touch on, okay, now that, now that we have all these reviews and we've gained even more reviews, how do we tactically actually go use them? Cool, Bryce, I'll go high, you go low. That makes sense? Yeah, so sure. uh, reviews have been an awesome feedback loop for Caraway. Uh, we review them through a number of lenses. It's awesome, just like social commentary is awesome to get uh, live feedback from both the happy and unhappy about the brand. So reviews have been uh, not just uh, pivotal to existing product improvements, but also given us uh, guidance on what new products to go out to market with. So one of the most uh, popular launches in kind of Caraway's history is our minis products and that mm -hmm. came straight from a lot of reviews of the regular fry pan saying that they wanted a sort of smaller product surface. They weren't cooking six eggs. They wanted to cook one or two. Um, so that was a just direct line of sight into a real-time sense of demand that we'd have for that product. And the cool part is it translated really well um, in terms of sort of assessing that relative demand to what the sell-through was when the product was launched. So we, uh, we love leveraging reviews to help guide our product roadmap and really help us understand where demand exists for new product categories. And also to Elizabeth's point, we've made tons of product refinements based off of what comes through on reviews. And it's hard to, to find other reliable places for that to happen. Doing one-to-one -one user research and surveys is expensive. And you know we're a 50 person company, we don't have an insights person. So reviews sort of act as that uh, you know, real-time bridge between our customers and our product. And, an example is that is with our uh, our food storage lids. We got some feedback that the uh, the airtight uh, technology is a little bit too tight, so we're working on some lid refinements and increasing that sort of finger hold to uh, allow for easier removal of those lids. So 
we uh, we really value the uh, the inputs that can come from that, and the Dacity Dash makes it makes it very easy to drill down into uh, specific products. Yeah, that's interesting, and 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 obviously you hope that you get the best reviews in the world, right? But the ones that are not five star are just as valuable to you and your product development team as the ones that are five star, right? Because it does give you that opportunity to um, have that feedback loop so you can continue improving your product and brand. And I know if I'm a customer and I leave feedback where I'm like, yeah, I mean, I love this 80%, but there's this 20% that could be improved and a brand actually takes that to heart and works to improve the product. And I, as the customer, get that feedback like, hey, thanks for thanks for your input. Here's things we're doing. Maybe here's uh, an incentive to like stick with us. I'm going to be a a loyal customer for life. Right. Um, Like that's that's a very powerful way to get customers like really invested and embedded in your brand, too. Um, so, yeah, yeah. I, I, I definitely tend to agree. I think kind of the most interesting reviews, honestly, are like four star reviews where mm-hmm. um, we're not like getting um, smoke blown up our butts, but like we're um, getting really like valuable feedback from people who I think are signaling to us with a four star and not a three or a two that they want to be super loyal to the brand. But there's like one thing which like the best things in life always have that. Like if you go on a plane, like it can be like a great trip. And there's usually like one thing that is a sticking point, but like overall the experience is good. And um, obviously you want to refine for that. You want to do different things, but it creates such um, an open capacity for meaningful dialogue to, um, to really uh, be able to turn those customers. The next time you're communicating with them, the next time you're doing a product release, and developing that product, what can you do that you didn't do the first time because you didn't have that feedback yet in hand to turn that person to, um, you know, into someone who just loves the brand and is really going to vouch for it. Very similar to like the traditional like net promoter score wisdom of like, it's much more valuable to turn a passive customer into um, a promoter than from a detractor to anything else. So I think that model has fallen out of favor a bit in e-com, but it's still very true that like you get such valuable feedback from that middle range person. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I think it's interesting how you can then take this and maybe Marcel, you can you can jump in and speak a little bit more to this, but you now have these customer lists, right? Where they're kind of rank ordering between one and five favorability, kind of giving you, yeah, your own your own net promoter score in a way. And you can take these segments of customers and start to retarget them in very, um, very automated ways within um within the Dasty platform, at least. So um I'll uh I'll I get so excited about this stuff, but I'll uh, I'll take a beat in the and let Marcel jump in a little bit of what, a little bit more about retargeting. Yeah, on the retargeting side, and I know there's a version of this within Akendo. What Dacity does beyond just a direct integration is being able to combine it with you know other customer segments, maybe customer LTV, uh, gender, demographic information, right in our platform. So from there, you can send maybe those mixed reviews a coupon code or something programmatically on a recurring basis. So basically from the dashboards, you can create customer lists, customer segments to split other reports out as well. So it really makes it really quick and easy to build that customer relationship on the retention marketing side. And additionally, if you really want to get more of those customers that are you know, your best, the five-star reviews, you can also use that to build lookalike audiences. So there's different ways within our platform to programmatically send those back to your ESPs to send, you know, emails directly to them, such as Clavio. Um, and then on the acquisition side, you know, TikTok, Facebook, Google ads. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I can jump in. Sorry. Um, I do think what I've seen through this kind of partnership is a real benefit. in I think, you know, around five years ago, like quizzes were king on like, uh, D2C websites and like everyone had a quiz and it was uh, sometimes like helpful. It's definitely an acquisition driver, but it's not always like relevant for the product. Our personal, you know, we have a few special SKUs and 
Um, it's not something that we necessarily need. However, we do need tools to be able to segment customers with and create um, you know, data points about them and about their experience and about who they are and what they value. Um, so anything where we're able to directly analyze those inputs is, is just a huge boon to us. And that's kind of another benefit that we've gotten from this partnership. Yeah. And I can even jump in there and probably give like a little bit of context too, as well as like where a lot of that data is coming from. So, um, you know, from a review perspective, obviously you get the data from the, the copy itself, like the testimonial, you get the stars, um, but it kind of also offers the ability to do what we call product and customer um, attributes. So the product attributes are things, again, related to the product. So um, was it uh, was it the right size? You know, was it clean? Did you like the color? Like things like that, that are about the product itself. And you're getting that feedback directly there. Then we have the customer attribute side, which is really, I think like when we talk about that data, like that is just, it's such a great area to collect that data, especially in a way that, you know, customers are really skeptical about telling you about themselves right now. Like they, they know we're using that. Um, but in a review, most likely like Again, going back to the to their first purchase, right? They probably went on your site. They went on the PDP. They looked at all their reviews. Um, if there's something where, um, you know, you are scrolling and you're looking and you're trying to find the person who is like you and has the same needs. So, um, again, maybe it's something in Caraway's perspective of like, are you an expert chef or are you just kind of figuring it out on your own? And that might make a difference on how you are like you might be like, oh, the expert chef, like, but I'm not an expert chef. That's not how I'm going to use the product. So those reviews and how they think about it aren't really relevant to me. So they probably used that information to make their purchasing decision to find like what their product was. So now when they're leaving your review and you're asking them, well, are you an expert chef or are you, you know, a novice? They're, they know why you're asking them that. It's not like, why, why what, what do you need this data for, right? So it's a really great way. Um, and again, really personalize it towards your brand. So what are you trying to figure out about your customers? What's going to help you? Again, going to the Dacity side, what's going to help you create those better segments of like combining all this information? What do I want to retarget them later? What do I need to know about them? You can do that in the reviews. And again, it, it's a way that customers feel comfortable with versus sometimes when you're asking them, you know, in, in other ways, like they, they see it, they get it, it helped them. Um, so that's just something as well. Like when you're thinking about your review strategy, you don't always think about it in the sense of like, why would I be asking for data at this point? But it's such a good opportunity that's going to, again, help you utilize um, and strengthen your, your marketing communications later on. Totally. And I think that reviews and, and Bryce has given such a great testimonial, right, to the retention side of things, but even from, from an acquisition standpoint, right? Statistics are really, really pow powerful for like psychologically for consumers, right? So if you're in a place where you're like, hey, we have 10,000 four to five star reviews or 90% of customers who review this product say that, X, Y, Z, right? That then in an from an acquisition standpoint, that takes a lot of the research and guesswork that you as a customer feel you have to do before making these purchases out of the question because you're you're being met with those testimonials up front um, at the right time so that your time to purchase is quicker than kind of those who came before you. So I think really um, understanding that reviews are not just a retention technique is, is another way that, um, that you can kind of better utilize those insights and, and, and spread the love. <laughs> and something I'd also add that we kind of touched on a little earlier, uh, don't be afraid of those negative reviews because yeah. as long as you are responding to them and responding to them publicly, that's also going to build a lot of that new um, consumer trust on that acquisition side as well. Like, again, to that point, like four or five star reviews or Bryce, what you said, like you love the four star reviews. I think it's 4.2 4 to 4.5 is actually the, the general sweet spot for star ratings that has the best conversion because people know that if you have all five star reviews, you are full of it. Like they, it, it just kind of goes away. And like, then they're like, well, they're lying to me with their marketing and something's got to be off. Like there's got to be someone who has one thing or the product wasn't right for them and that's okay. Um, so consumers actually really want to see that there is some sort of 
negative to actually like build that trust with your brand and again to help them make that purchase decision and then from your side like you can combat anything that's negative by one actually listening to the feedback so again is it valid are there things you need to improve but um the more you publicly respond to that again from an acquisition side that's also going to help so don't worry about bad reviews hurting your acquisition as long as you're managing it and being proactive about it um it it's beneficial to to have those come in yeah no that makes sense and um, kind of to that point, I think one thing, or th this is another one of the questions that, that came up, um, in the pre-webinar survey was how, how often can you see a correlation between glitches in the customer journey and negative reviews, right? So sometimes the experience is not solely about the product, right? It's about the, the steps that it took to get them to purchase the product. Um, so have you folks, anyone on this team, I guess, had experience with, um, with like kind of un unlocking customer journey issues in, um, by, by way of these reviews, I guess? Certainly opportunities for optimization on the merchandising front. You would think that before a uh, product delivers five to seven days later, you get a sense of if there are bugs or critical issues on your on your site. Definitely encourage trying to find tighter ways to get that, that information. But we do use it, I think, Elizabeth, more so to guide general site strategy. Like, hey, I'm really happy I bought this product. It would have been awesome to see if I could have purchased it alongside this one. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize I needed to use wooden utensils with it. Could you have paired those together at checkout? So we do get really cool opportunities for bundling yeah, merchandising improvements to that that come out of reviews, which is great. Very cool. Um, well, thanks, folks. We I'm like seeing some questions flow in the Q and A. So I think um, let me kind of start at the top with video reviews. We had a question come in around video reviews, and this person asked. How do you provide what's being said in the video? So I think maybe this is a this is a Lindsay question, maybe. Yeah, I would say like as much again, going to that idea of like if you want to genuinely get customer feedback, I wouldn't really guide the customer too much and say, like, please leave a video of X, Y, and Z. You really want to get their authentic experience. And I think people like leave a mix of hey, here's a cool video of the product. Some people do it to themselves and it's them talking about why they like the product. Um, so I wouldn't, you know, you can leave pointers, but again, like if you truly want customer feedback, if you're guiding them too much on what to include in that video, then you lose that, you know, authenticity. And again, just the the value of the insights that you're getting from that. Um, so yeah, I would, I would recommend that. We do have ways though with Okendo that you don't have to automatically post like every video or photo. So if you want to make sure like someone's not doing something inappropriate in a video, you can say if it has a video or a photo, like we have to manually moderate it. Whereas if it doesn't, we can automatically post it. So those are things just if that's ever a worry, you have that control um, to set. But again, in terms of guiding them, I would let it be as authentic as possible. If um if a customer does respond with a video, does a kendo translate that into a transcript or in a, in any sort of way so that like someone like Bryce or Connor doesn't have to go watch <laughs> like video after video after video, but they're able to kind of pull out some some key points or um or that work. is a good question, and I might have to check my product team on that. I, <laughs> I do I do occasionally watch videos. I would okay. say that like people aren't the best at making videos. And like a lot of the times what you get is like supplemented by the text itself, which um, I think kind of- Are valuable. Yeah, so, but I do watch them and they're interesting and sometimes they look better than what I would make, which is cool. Yeah, you're like, you, uh, you have experience with this, like a, a TikTok star or something. Yeah. Um, cool, next question. Is there a way to have the review embedded in the email? So uh, your post-purchase email, are they able to select like the star rating right within that email without having to jump into um, another link? Yeah, so with Okendo, no. And that's been intentionally designed um, because there are issues with like deliverability and, um, you know, other technical pieces to having an email 
built like that. So we do recommend you still have a separate experience. And again, you're limited to like, can you, you can't really in an email respond and add videos and, and other mm -hmm. things. So, um, that has been intentional because we actually have found that that is not the best way to collect reviews. And there's, there's a lot of issues with that. But again, making sure that experience after that is a single click and all on one page, um, is super important. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, Connor, this one goes out to you maybe, but uh, you had mentioned or give it, given the PSA that you think there will be kind of a crackdown on um, noting when there is an incentivized review given. Um, do you know anything or maybe resources to look at around like that being mandated, the legality around it, or maybe this is a, a Lindsay question too, but... I'm not a lawyer. Consult um, <laughs> consult Mike Ross or Harvey. Yeah. All right. Or ChatGPT. Um, no. So I, I think it's uh, I, I I don't have official guidance on it. You can do some some Googling, I'm sure, Lindsay. Maybe you have additional resources to send. But reviews disclosure is something that um, you know we were flagged by our council, and so we have gone ahead and uh, disclosed that in every single place that we uh, surface reviews. Okendo made that incredibly easy, no lift uh, on our product team at all, um, which was fantastic. And the other thing that we have had to do is any bundled reviews, which feature component SKUs that are rolling into uh, an aggregate product suite featuring multiple SKUs together, you got to be um, disclosing that as well. So for example, we sell a set that has multiple products inside of it. The total sum of those reviews is 50,000, but it's actually, you know, 40,000 from this, 5,000 from this, 5,000 from this. So we also had to disclose the aggregation. So take a look at that. Um, don't mean to fear monger, but better to get ahead of it. You know, it, it, it makes sense, right? And gives you the opportunity as brands to be leaders in the space by being proactive, right? Like not being the ones that are waiting for this to be the next, uh, the next uh, legally mandated um, situation. Yeah, yeah. Any assurance, we're still yeah. in business. So it hasn't, um, <laughs> it's not like it's a site killer. It's uh, yeah. yeah. And more we, from we, the consumer side too, that also gives you a level of trust as well. Yeah. So I know like if I've gone to a website and we've touched on this earlier and it's like all five-star reviews, I know they're probably not being super authentic. Maybe they're paying for the reviews or incentivizing them. But if I see those things disclosed, it's just another um, thing that gives confidence that those are true reviews. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd say yeah. there's a really difference too between like the influencers that you're sending free PR packages too, and incentivizing them for reviews versus someone who truly bought the product. And you're saying like, Hey, we actually want your feedback and similar to a survey, you know, incentivizing a survey, it's just more public. So again, yeah, we are really? first point, not lawyers, <laughs> but your legal team feels is comfortable, but if you need to do that, it kind of makes it easy. Totally. Um, next question, I I'm kind of combining a couple that have come in, but this is around how can you add the, the best practices for addressing negative reviews. So if it's not something you have done historically, what's a good way to start? And that balance between public and private, because I, I believe, um, Lindsay, you mentioned earlier, it's really great to show that publicly, like show that you that display of, hey, we're listening and we're working to make it right. But if you're offering um, some sort of promotion to, to then make it right. Is that something that you actually want visible to everyone? So kind of, how do you think about balancing that transparency, um, with the customers, I guess? Yeah. So I'd say, you know, examples I've seen brands do is they'll reach out publicly and say, Hey, we're so sorry. Like something more generic, right? Like, Hey, we're so sorry you experienced this. Like, we're going to reach out to you and resolve it. And then privately, that's when you say, hey, thank you so much for your review. Can you tell us more? Can you get on a call? Like, here's a coupon. We want to make it right. So on and so, so forth. Um, we do have some great integrations um, with help desks such as Gorgeous that allow you kind of to automatically flag those negative reviews so that your team can go and respond from that platform. Um, so that's kind of what we've seen brands do. So I definitely wouldn't throw a coupon code in your review so that everyone 
who sees it can do that. But it is good just to show like people publicly again that there are some people who don't love this product. And again, here are the here are the attributes of the person who didn't. And again, maybe it wasn't the right product for them. Um, but then you know, you can always handle it offline. Um, and to that point, if you know, like maybe it wasn't the right product for them because I can see like this is what they're about and they should try a different product line, you can go deeper um privately with your customer success team in terms of how they normally handle those. Yeah, I would tend to agree. I, I think a level of transparency is is really good. And also um it's there are it is great to have like a moment to educate. We are often someone's first ceramic cookware purchase. Um, we're often someone's first like good quality ceramic cookware purchase. Um, and with that comes a totally different mode. As you guys know, like every different cooking surface you use, you have to get used to, you have to learn about it. And in a lot of our reviews, we see customers who, um, you know, maybe didn't understand X, Y, or Z. They didn't understand that they can't completely set a pan on fire for an hour and it's going to be okay. Um, things like that, where in that review, then if they're angry about that, you can acknowledge that, be very compassionate, um, but also just use that as um, a moment where I would, I actually do, I want a customer who's browsing our site to see a human type that out in a real way so that they can kind of grasp onto that information in a different way than like if it's a random blurb on a PDP. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of makes a different impact and it sets up a relationship from um, what could be considered like a bad moment and turns it into something productive. Yeah, I saw one on um, no, the kind of funny because I know you just said like, can't set the pan on fire. There was one review actually in Caraway that was like, my husband cracked an egg on the side of the pan and then I kept using it and now I can't get the stain off. It's like, of course you can't because you burned it onto the side so many times. So yeah. There's a lot of like tidbits like that, especially in those mixed reviews. Cause like, I love my pan, but my, my husband ruined it. <laughs> um, that's funny. I will say um, not, not to plug the product anymore, but I'm a super caraway fan and bought it for um, my parents for Christmas one year. And then my siblings have gone on to buy them. Like it, it, they're such great quality products that I think in the review standpoint, yeah, it's helpful to then have a community where people are sharing tips and tricks, right? And like their best use for the product because it helps the customer then start to visualize like, oh, how can this fit into my lifestyle, right? Um, well, you're so also like crafting a, a relationship with the product. Buyers want to be, um, they want to feel smart because they are smart and they want to feel like, the purchase that they're making, they're dropping X hundred of dollars on whatever. Like I searched for a TV for a full month before I actually bought one because I wanted to make sure each individual element of it worked for me and the shortcomings I knew in my head, but they were still worth going when I weighed the pros and cons. And that's an actual like really satisfying game to play with yourself. Um, and then when you get that actual product, you know exactly what to expect um, and you have um, kind of a deeper relationship with it than something you buy for $12 on X e-commerce. <laughs> on We Won't Say It. Um, awesome. I think we probably have time for about one or two more questions. Uh, this one that came in is pretty interesting. A and it's kind of around, are there ways to offer tiered levels of incentive based on the type of review given. So if they are just filling out the stars versus if they give a written review versus if they're at now adding a photo to the review, um, I guess, is, is there even a way to offer a tiered kind of kickback or would you even recommend doing that? Yeah, so there is a way and we definitely recommend it. Um, it's more of leaving a review video photo but again it's just what do you want so again if you want to say like hey i actually don't want to leave an incentive just for a regular review but if you add a photo five percent you know that's absolutely something you can do and at least within okendo everything's automated so the coupon codes are generated through shopify 
Um, and again, we have integrations with a royalty product coming soon that will also be native within the platform eventually. So um, just being able to to do those tiers again, it's just joy about what you what your goal is. So if you're like, hey, video hasn't worked for me, like I just need the photos or I need the testimonials, that's what I care about, then focus on getting what your goal is. Like we always recommend more UGC is super powerful, but uh, if you don't necessarily like need it or you don't have the strategy to use it elsewhere and you really just want the data and the reviews and, you know, focus on what you need for that level. But again, we enable tiered, it's automated um, and definitely something that if that is what you're looking to increase more of is a great way to do that. Awesome. And, and there, okay. another question, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, no, you go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say another question was that um, is there a plan for a loyalty program in the future? Which yes, you there answered, is. Yeah, you coming, answered that. coming very very soon um, in the next. I'd say I probably can't say, but keep an eye out. <laughs> keep an eye out. You're all probably going to be on Okendo's email marketing list soon, so you guys will will hear more. So. Bryce, did you want to add on to the to the tier? No, I, I was just saying the the like the couponing and all of that. It just works very seamlessly. There's like no maintenance or worry that I have to go through, which is actually a big reason why I'm on Okendo now, or we're on Okendo. Um, so it's just a relief to know that like those customers are giving us something and they're being rewarded for it without a hitch. That's awesome. Um, I think last question. We'll take up the day and I'm not, I'm not actually, I'm not sure of this one personally. So maybe someone on this group does. And if not, we can uh, maybe do some, we can do some homework and send it back out with the recording. But do you know if there's a way to respond to negative reviews on Amazon? Um, in this instance, this, this customer was not able, or this merchant was not able to respond publicly or privately because the reviewer did not want to be contacted. And that kind of hurt, um, can, I think has the potential to really hurt your presence on Amazon. So any of you have experience with that? The tricky one. Amazon's a world of its own. Amazon's its own reviews and platform and marketplace. So all of the restrictions that would apply to the Okendo and sort of Shopify brand world don't apply there. I, I'm not exactly sure in that instance, but I'm sure we can try to help you figure that one out, um, Rochelle, but I don't know offhand. I don't know if uh, Lindsay or Bryce, you guys know. Yeah, we, we really focus on the site. And I'd say the reason that we emphasize, because so many people are like, well, I sell on Amazon. That's my main channel. Like, why do I need reviews on my site? And this is exactly why, because you will have control over those reviews, over the experience and everything. And it can counteract those sites such as Amazon, where they have their own roles. You know, even if you're you're selling on like a Walmart or Target, right? Like you can't necessarily always respond or or do that. So you really want to make sure that like you get those those star ratings on your site, you own them, you can use them elsewhere. Yeah. So um, I don't, it doesn't really help the question on how you can manage the Amazon review, but I'll say it makes it more important to make sure that you have your own method for yeah. collecting. Yeah, we have a lot of uh, brands that sell you know, on multi-channel Shopify plus Amazons are most common. So I'll reach out to you and um, we'll we'll ask a few of our bigger Amazon merchants to see if they have any tips for you. Yeah. We can follow up with you on that. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for uh, taking the time to hop on with us today. Um, we will be sending three, I believe it's three uh, attendees, a set of caraway pans. Um, so pumped for you, who you lucky winners end up being. And then I think we may also... Um, drop a discount code as well. So uh, you should be hearing from us with a with a follow-up link and all that fun stuff. And uh, we will see you next time. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks, Thank everyone. you, guys. Thanks, all.